Shakuhachi lesson. My name is Sean Renzo Head, and I am your licensed Shakuhachi instructor. Today we are talking about short flutes. This is a 1.5. Last week we worked with a 2.5, and um, I'm actually doing these videos right next to each other, so the adjustment for the lips is actually going to be a little bit of a challenge for me, uh, but I hope that this video will give you a, a lot of help with uh, approaching the uh, the different armatures necessary for different lengths of flutes. So they do make shorter ones, 1.4s, 1.3s, and I've even seen a 1.1, which is really, really small. It's like it's like just this portion, or like this, like this portion here, and um, it's it's actually very difficult to play because of how tight that the armature needs to be. So last week, what we talked about is going from that ha shape to the oo shape, and the reason why we go to oo is because we need that lower lip to kind of pucker out a little bit. So it goes. Ha, ooh, 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 ooh. And that little, that little tiny sliver right there is what's going to give us a really nice sound for uh, an instrument like this. So let's do that same sort of pattern. And let me use the, the note E. So I found a good, uh, a good center. Notice how small the armature is, and I got to be careful with the mic because it's very close. It's just a really tiny little sliver. And now notice what happens when I have to go up. It gets really, really small, and it's almost to the point where it's non-existent. So that last note would be like one of the high notes on a 1.8, like at the end of the flute register. Let's think of a high C, so not like the he. Um, not this one, but the one above that. And that's the sort of embouchure that you would need just to play the, the con register of this sort of flute. And so that's the biggest challenge, is working your way up. And also higher and higher, but the embouchure has to get tighter and tighter and tighter. Now, this is the thing, I, a cautionary note about short flutes. It's so easy to get super, super tense throughout your entire face because you're you're really squeezing like this and ooh to try to get it to try to get that sound come out. And um, you know, it's almost kind of it's actually kind of funny. It's almost like if you ate one of like those sour warheads and you get that sort of feeling there. That's kind of like how tight the actual armature needs to be for a flute like this. Um, and with that can come a lot of tension and a lot of pressure right here in this sort of area of the uh, of like the lower the lower jaw or lower jaw just the jaw here and you get a lot of a lot of pressure here and you're gonna feel it and it's gonna get uncomfortable if you do it too much so it's important that you try to keep all of the armature here in the lips not in the face not squeezing and like doing something like this where you're grinding your teeth <laughs> try to stay as relaxed as possible. Let the fingers do all the difficult work, not your face. Now, fingering for this is actually, it's actually a little bit strange because if I was to go to a 1.8, here's my 1.8 fingering, and then here's the 1.5. All the fingers have to be so close, and that's gonna be something you're gonna have to get used to as well, just like with the longer flutes where they stretch out like this. This would be the 2.5, here's the 1.8, and here's the 1.5. So one thing that I recommend, and I think that you can do this, as, you should do this on the on the 2.5 as well in order to develop your dexterity. But even just something as simple as so something like that, just so you can work the fingers. Too. That one's a little bit hard, actually. I don't think I can do it that, that fast as the other ones. So another thing that's really difficult with these flutes, and it's not as difficult with the long flutes, and that's why I didn't mention it, is the medi notes. And these, these flutes are really, really sensitive for some reason. If you push in at all with this flute, this is not, this is not pushing in. And this is pushing in. Almost all the sound completely just drops and it just goes into that upper octave. So 
having the feeling of just setting the flute on on the chin and then playing is really really important especially for these short flutes the long flutes you have a little bit more uh you can finesse with them a little bit more because the whole of the of the shakachi is actually larger so the four part will be thicker and uh there's more of an opening to work with unlike the short flute where there's there just isn't some of the other things that you'll that you'll notice about these flutes is that you actually have to go deeper for some some techniques so like koro koro Especially those two medis or the two daimeri especially that one you just really got to dip down uh, with it the, the the benefit of these short flutes is that when you go back to your 1.8 or when you go to the longer flute sizes you're going to be able to hit those higher registers a lot easier because you're training your armature to work with such a you know a shrill sort of flute so i think the last thing that i want to talk about with this is um you know what what kind of pieces that you would use on it and what i use it for so i actually use these short flutes for a lot of minyo stuff and um like uh, azuma jishi or kumoi jishi i think that this one the 1.5 it just really helps lighten up um lighten it up but it also has a, like a, a level of power that the longer flutes don't so uh, i hope you guys get like um the the short flutes as well i I really enjoy it, especially um, this one in particular has such an interesting coloring too with this, uh, all of it. That's why I bought it. it, even though it does have one quirk. And the one quirk about this flute is that the E pitch, that uh, not here, that last one is really, really hard to hit. But I digress. So I hope that this video was helpful for you. I know it was a lot shorter than the um, than the longer flute video, but if you have questions, just leave them in the comments below and I can answer you there directly. And if you guys have enough questions, I can actually make a part two of either the long flutes or the short flutes and some things that I do in order to uh, prepare myself to, to play for these or how I go about uh, getting a better sound out of them. Uh, what do I what do I do for any number of circumstances? So again, I hope this was helpful. If you guys are interested in private lessons, I do teach online for Skype, uh, Zoom, Facebook Messenger. And uh, if you're in the Houston area, you can come to my home studio and we can do lessons here. So have a great week and I'll see you guys next week.